Yo, 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 what's good? Easy Breezy Eve here, and this is my spoiler talk for Black Widow. If you haven't been here before, welcome. Go ahead, hit the like and subscribe button down below. Every little thing counts, small channel over here. And if you have been here before, welcome back, yo. I'm gonna try to keep this one shorter than my usual classic film reviews slash discussions. I'm gonna do this one sort of like, just this quick spoiler talk, quick review sort of thing. Um, you know, because First of all, I'm sure most of you guys, if you're watching this, you've seen it already. Um, and it, I know I'm a little bit late to the party here, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, I, I do have a few things to say about this movie. If you don't want to listen to the whole thing, I did put timestamps down below. Maybe you just want to listen to certain things that I'm going to discuss. I thought this movie was a sort of spiritual successor or a spiritual sequel to the Captain America films. Um, not so much Civil War because Civil War was sort of like Avengers 2.5. I thought this was like very much in line with Winter Soldier spy-esque Marvel. And I thought that was great. Um, it was really like, okay, we had Winter Soldier for Captain America. Now we get the Black Widow version of that. You know, you know you're finding your family back again, even though you're not blood related, right? But Bucky is... Um, Chris, uh, Bucky is Captain America's family, you know? And in this case, Elena is um, Natasha's family. You, even though they're not blood related, they're, it's the closest thing to family they'll ever have. And I thought this was sort of in similar fashion, both sort of spies. One is America, this one is Russia. But the first thing I wanna talk about quickly is particularly the cast. I thought the cast was great. You know, we have Scarlett Johansson, Florence Pugh, who is amazing. And I did mention in a tweet a while back saying if they casted Florence Pugh, David Harbour, and Rachel Weisz, no way they're going to only use them for this one movie. I knew at least one of them, most likely Florence Pugh, was going to come back and I'll talk more about that in later on. The last thing I want to talk about is the post credit scene. Um, Rachel Weisz and David Harbour, man, I thought, you know, these are veteran actors. Um, Rachel Weisz, I don't know if you've seen the Mummy series or anything she's been in, but probably one of the most beautiful women to have ever walked this planet. So, you know, part of me just kind of wanted to watch the movie because she's in it. But um, I thought her chemistry with um, David Arbor was great. Um, I forgot their names, Melina and whew, I forgot David Arbor's name in this, but um, he they were both great. So I really liked the casting. I thought it was uh, perfect almost, per you know, you can't. There's no way you're gonna go wrong casting these three. Um, we already know Scarlett Johansson, so and you know, to no one's surprise, they knocked it out of the park. I want to talk about Olga Kirilenko, but a little bit later when we get to the twists. So the first thing I want to talk about quickly is the special effects. Great, amazing special effects as usual, as Marvel does. I thought in the flashback scene. So spoiler alert, guys! Spoiler, 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 spoiler. Okay, oops. In the flashback scenes, we see the girls as kids and um, Rachel Weisz and David Harbour were, I think they were, I mean, I'm sure they had to um, de-age them, age them down, which we've seen Marvel do this many times because they get veteran actors to sort of tell exposition, the older flashbacks. So I thought they did it well. Um, I, I, you know, I always like it. I just want to give a special shout out. I love it when they do that. It's so real that if you didn't know any better, there's no way you would have known that until we see them later on, you know? Another sort of thing about the flashback was the accents. I noticed that the kids back in 1995 had American accents, but if you've been watching the Marvel movies, Natasha, when we first see her in Iron Man 2, she has a Russian accent. And even Florence Pugh's character, uh, Yelena, she has a Russian accent. And so when they're speaking English, they all have Russian accents, except for um, Scar Johansson. She now doesn't have an accent for her character. I just thought it was weird because they didn't have accents as children and they developed their accents again later. But as for me, someone who was in that sort of similar situation, I, I grew up speaking English uh, as a young kid, so I don't have an accent, but I also know my parents' language. And um, I never redeveloped my accent because I moved from the US uh, back to my mom's country and lived there until, you know, fourth or fifth grade, and I went back to the US. So like, I never developed an accent 
after I already spoke in an American accent. So I thought that was kind of funny. Like, there's no way you can predict something like that if you don't know anybody who's been through that. So that's a mistake. You know, it's not even a mistake that might happen. It's just something I thought was um, was just funny per to me personally. I also digged the backstory itself in which they were sort of this Russian sleeper cell family. It was very, I don't know if you guys have seen that show, The Americans. It was very like The Americans vibe right at the end of this series, spoiler American series spoilers, at the end they get found out basically and they have to go back. And that's basically what's happening to their family in the 90s where they get found out and they have to go back, um, but they're sort of accustomed to the American life um, it was the only time they ever were really a family was in America, of course, right? And so they, their whole lives, especially the youngest uh, foreign, foreign Fuse character, um, she basically cherishes that part of her life the most and sort of her secret desire is to sort of get this family back together and become a family again, which, you know, by the end, that sort of happens. So which is good. I, I wanna talk about specifically the twists in the movie, the big revelation. So let's skip over and get to the third act. And the reason I wanna talk about the, spoil the, the twists was not because of the twists themselves. I thought the twists were great, but it's sort of my only critique with this movie is, yeah, let's talk about it. So there were two really twists here, both happening in like the third act of the movie, the end. And the first one was the the Mission Impossible moment. And you guys know what I'm talking about, the masks, right? It turns out that right at the end, after Natasha says, pain makes us stronger, you taught me that to Melina, she switched sides and decided to help her family. Um, and they planned to get captured, but the only way to do that is if they switched faces. Now, and that moment went great. It turns out that they switched faces, everything went well. Of course, the, the main antagonist looked into um, Scarlett Johansson's eyes and realized it's not really Melina, immediately, I think. And But she couldn't kill him because of his pheromones. I thought that was kind of goofy, the pheromones, anti-killing, kill me pheromones. But I'm not, I'm not gonna dispute the science fiction or the fantasy elements because it's an Avengers movie at the end of the day. Um, but. I thought the directing choice here was a bit tricky. Now, overall, I loved the movie. Um, I thought it was great. It's one of the more emotional ones, and you know, and it's also like a spy thriller in a way, the Marvel version of a spy thriller, similar to Winter Soldier, like I said earlier. So I, it's really in my wheelhouse. So I really like that. But when they had the twist and it happened, they did a flashback. They did a flashback to explain the twist, and I thought you didn't have to do it. I know, I know why they did it because it's a very, it's a film for everyone. It's almost a family movie, a little bit violent for a Marvel movie. I'm not going to lie, but it's like they have to explain it for maybe the kids to understand what's going on. But I thought that the quality, and I, I know they're, they're playing to their audience here, like, you know, the average audience, but I thought if they had removed that, the film would have still worked and people who didn't get it, just you didn't have to get it. You had you just have to rewatch it to understand it. But I thought I thought that without those flashbacks to explain that twist about the how or why they decided to switch faces, I don't think they really had to do it. It was sort of like exposition from a time within the movie. It was just weird that they did that. It kind of brought me out of the movie a little bit. And you know what? They did it once, which is fine, but they didn't just do it once. They did it twice. They did it again about the pheromones thing that I was talking about, which is already nuts, by the way, but it's OK. I'm not going to critique the fantasy elements here. All right, because it doesn't matter. Iron Man flies with his hands like I'm not here to judge, but the, the nerve thing. The nerve thing. He, she was hoping that he would punch him in the, f he would punch her in the face hard enough that she severs her like olfactory nerve, so she doesn't smell the pheromone. But like, the problem is, you know, one the science about that is anyway. I'm not gonna debate that. But they didn't have to flashback. They didn't have to flashback. If if she just hit her head on the table to sever the nerve and break her nose, like 
people would have understood why she did it. He said pheromones like twice already. So I, I just thought it was weird, you know, to double flashback in the same, not, not even the same act. It was like within a few minutes of each other. I thought that was super weird. Um, it was a bit condescending, but that is sort of overall as a, as a movie, that's sort of my only critique. Because they didn't really do that for other Marvel movies. They never did that. Like they never did that for um, the Winter Soldier or whatever, you know, maybe it didn't need that much explaining, but I just thought that was, that was a bit goofy, <laughs> that double flashback. I do want to talk about though, the overall theme, the overall sort of child trafficking theme. But before we get there, before we get there, I did some tension that I would mention about Olga Kirilenko. Olga Kirilenko, I ruined it for myself. I ruined it for myself because I saw her name in the credits. And if you watch James Bond movies, if you've seen Hitman, you know who Olga Kirilenko is. She's in other stuff too. Um, she's in that Terry Smolik film, I think, with Brad Pitt. But um, if you know Olga Kirilenko, let's not talk about the fact that she was a kid when Natasha was an adult, but I'm pretty sure Olga Kirilenko is older than Natasha. I don't care about that stuff. I just thought that was funny because I'm a weirdo. But her, she's a big name. And they mentioned, they put her name in the opening credits. Um, and then your whole movie, you're thinking, well, where is she? when is she going to show up? Then they mentioned about the daughter of the antagonist and then you're like well she's probably the daughter and about like not even to the second act at the end of the first act we get the fight between i think the bad guy's name is the taskmaster i'm not sure and uh natasha for the first time and then they mentioned the the bad guy as a guy he but it's like you never it was a weird time to mention it it was like they were trying to it was so obvious they're trying to trick us and at that point i'm like oh it's probably Olga Kirilenko. And then they mentioned another sort of flashback of the bombing. And that's that that one was fine to me um, because we never got to see that before. And that's that matters throughout the whole uh, MCU, that moment. And um, you realize that it's her because who else would it be? You never, you haven't seen, it's been an hour and a half and you haven't seen Olga Kirilenko. Why would you cast someone so, like a big name if you're just gonna use her a little bit it turns out she has been used she's been the taskmaster the whole time i think that's the name right taskmaster if i'm wrong i'm sorry um but that person the mimic um and that was cool i kind of spoiled that one for myself because i put the puzzle i put the pieces together you know olga curlington had to play the daughter and we hadn't seen her so it had to be the she had to be the villain so yeah um that one i spoiled for myself let me know of what you guys thought i'm sure maybe most of you guys or some of you guys snuffed that out as well that was interesting okay let's get to the theme ever since the opening credits um because it, ultimately this this movie is about natasha and um elena and um because one elena is basically taking over the natasha role right she's basically going to be black widow too similar to um, um now we have a new captain america that's sam and right at the opening credits we see sort of trafficking of girls um they're being trafficked to be trained as spies um all over the world right so immediately you're like okay these girls are being trained as these black widows um russian spies basically and then later on in the movie we get uh elena talking about how they had taken out her uterus um, so she can't have children right basically sterilized her and because so this way she they never i guess you know the thinking is she'll never want to have a family because she can't you know because they she can't reproduce but if you read between the lines here and then you have this guy this sort of mafia guy they introduced the bad guy um, like this like this mafia guy in the beginning and now he's like the head of this super spy ring but if you read between the lines here it's really just like um sex trafficking child trafficking sort of themes going on here and they have to sort of defeat this guy to free all these um basically you know women who are spies unwilling spies because they're being mind controlled but at the same time it's sort of like they are freeing them from bondage like you know from this sort of life of being uh, 
trafficked all over the world、uh, for this guy, for this one guy, and he was sort of like a weird pervert in a sort of way. Like the way he was playing his character was the, like he was a sleazy guy. It's not explicit at all, but it the the. The the connections can be made there. Hey guys, Eve from the edit here. For some reason, I couldn't really communicate my thoughts very well when I was doing the video. But what I wanted to say is the implication of not being able to reproduce and getting your reproductive organs taken out as a woman would mean, in line with the sex trafficking, sex slavery theme that I'm reading into, is if the woman is sterile, it doesn't. Hinder them from, you know, it hinders them from getting pregnant and easier to control their bodies in a way, in that way. And also, the mind control. I mean, if you think about it, mind control is basically body control.、Um, and having this sort of man and a bunch of faceless men with guns being in control of all of that、uh, in the city of in the sky sort of falls in line with that theme as well. Anyway. Back to the original thoughts, and I, I just thought that was interesting. I thought it was a it was a very bold theme to bring up in a Marvel movie, where I guess they also realize that a lot of their fans are growing older,、um, so they can hit these more adult themes in the movie. I thought that was great. I thought it was bold for a Marvel film, especially a Black Widow movie where it's like a lead, you know, female lead. So it made sense, but. Um, yeah, I I, just, I thought it was good. You know, I thought that was sort of a big plus for this movie, hitting that theme. So finally, we get to the end credit scene, and in the end credit scene, we see Julia Louis Dreyfus、um, at Natasha's grave with、um, Florence Pugh, and it turns out, if、I'm, you guys tell me if I'm wrong here, it turns out that Elena has been working for the Contessa. And she is like this new Hydra sort of head of this new Hydra sort of figure. So we're we're kind of getting Hydra back, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know too much about the background. I try not to spoil things for myself, but this is sort of common knowledge, I think. So among fans. So yeah, and we will see. Is we don't even have to wait for the next Marvel movie. We just I think we just have to wait for the the Hawkeye series. If I'm not mistaken, there's a Hawkeye series with you know the girl from Bumblebee.、Um, I forgot her name. I should know from Pitch Perfect. The girl from Pitch Perfect. And uh, uh, yeah, and there's going to be the series. And I I think if I'm not mistaken, she is going to be the main villain. It seems. So that was going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. You know. So yeah, and that is sort of my quick spoiler review for this movie. Let me know what you think down below. And、um, let me know what other movies that are newer that I should review. You know, I sort of do reactions to classic movies.、Um, maybe some newer movies I will as well. But for the movies that I don't have time to do reactions for, but I am watching, I'll do some reviews as well. So if you liked it, go ahead and subscribe below. I hope to see you again next time.、Uh, thanks for watching, guys. And remember, until the next video, easy does it.